I certainly appreciate it when you stop in. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday, August 17th. Now, what we do here, in case you haven't been here before, is we talk about OTC and penny stocks. Now, if you have been here before, and this is kind of boring to you, got some news over here to keep you busy. This is news I've looked at over the last five days. This is primarily OTC market news. Uh, oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. Now, I point out that it's OTC market news because we do talk about penny stocks as well. Now, yes, yes, they are all penny stocks, but a penny stock can be any stock under $5 and it doesn't matter what market it's on. New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or the OTC. They're all fair game. Now, we're going to be doing most of our research right here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock. For a lot of good reasons. One, it's absolutely free for all the information they give you. That's good. Two, I don't even have to sign in. None of that hassle. And three, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all that pertinent and important information we're constantly looking for. So if you're constantly going over to Google looking for your information, you're constantly wasting your time. Seriously, just come over here. Make your research hassle-free. Get it right the first time you find it. Boy, that'd make a good slogan. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. All right, our dollar volume has come up. We were at 1.3 billion yesterday, I believe it was, which is very low. We are at 1.9 now, and our average is 2.1. So we're getting close to our average, and that's just an average. It's nothing to brag about. Our share volume fell under 10 billion we were barely hanging on to 10 billion yesterday and last week we were over at 13 billion somewhere like that but we are definitely bouncing between 7 billion and 14 15 billion a lot of volatility and we're right there in the middle so we're just kind of going sideways and even our trades aren't moving 250,000 is the average low and we've been under that for a while right now we're just kind of hanging around that so there's not a lot of super activity on the OTC market hasn't been for a while so I've got a few stocks we're going to take a look at today these are stocks that you could say well caught the investors attention we're jumping and pumping on the charts absolutely all right let me show you what I got First stock we're taking a look at was a doozy today. This is ticker WSFL, Woodstock Holdings. This was the biggest gaining stock with the most trades on the entire OTC market. She had over 154 trades today. Now, there were companies that had more trades, but not more gains. This was number one on the entire market. She finished a day at 67.5 cents with over 260% gains. She's on the pink tier, but limited information tier that means they're late on one or more of their filings and if they're late for too long they will be yanked off of the OTC and put into the expert market now this isn't a delisting think of it more as a time out they'll stay there until they get their filings caught up once they do they'll get back onto the market now the otcmarkets.com website will give you a heads up just before they're about to get yanked off in case you're invested in it or are thinking about buying them they will put in yellow down here grace period and if you come over here to this quote tag, click that and scroll down, it'll tell you the very last day of that grace period, the day they're going to be yanked. And that's great information to know. But we're not there yet. They do have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. I tell you in every video, look for these green ticks. This is verified information behind the scenes. It's important information, so we like to see this. They also have independent directors. Now, this could be telling us something. You need independent directors if you're going to uplist. Doesn't matter to where. Wherever you go, you need them. But if you're not going to uplist, you really don't need them on the payroll. So maybe we know more than they're telling us. So what does this company do? Well, it really doesn't matter. They don't tell us a whole lot here. They tell us that they currently own 100% of Woodstock Wealth Management, and they're trying to build shareholder value. That's about it. And when I looked around trying to figure it out, couldn't find a lot of information. But it really has nothing to do with why they ran today. So what was the relative volume around this mystery reason? Well, she normally does, whoa, <laughs> 593 shares a day. Not very many. And today she did 205,000. Now that's not a huge number, but put it in perspective, that is 400 times her normal volume. That is a huge jump. 
What is your share structure? You're going to like this, folks. We're not just talking a low float. We're talking a ridiculously low float. Right there, folks, a quarter million shares. You want to be precise, 260 million. I'm calling it a quarter million. Folks, that is just ungodly. You rarely ever find a stock that has a float that low. And they've got uh, 4 million outstanding and 50 million authorized. They could put all those on the market, but they're not. So we have a super duper ridiculously low float. Wow. Financials, well, this is where you realize the company isn't doing anything. They show us that they made $4 million. We got three zeros up here. We got to put behind any of the numbers down here. So that isn't bad for the end of 2021. I don't see any profits. I don't see the cost of revenue. And then when I come over to the quarterly, I get even less information. So I really can't tell what is up with this company. But again, this has nothing to do with why it's running. Disclosures. Well, you've got nothing over here. And I mean, literally, we got problems because one, they are pink limited, so they are late. I see they put in an annual back here in September, an annual report, and then another annual report here in March. And with every annual, you must put in an attorney letter. I don't see an attorney letter anywhere here. Those aren't free. Maybe that's the problem. They don't have any money to pay for it. And I don't know if that's the only one they're missing here. I'd have to go look it. But they have gaps. And when you come down here to SEC filings, we've got nothing since 2019. So it must be in the news, right? we got a catalyst in the news. Let's go see what we got. Uh, Woodstock Holdings announces reverse stock split. Don't panic. That was back in 2017. So that's not it either. There is nothing going on here. So why was this running today? Basically because of tweets like this. There was just lots of tweets. Once this information got broadcast once, it just got repeated and repeated over again. WSFL has $468.5 million in assets. Now, we didn't jump into any of their financials, but they're right. I did look at that. They do have assets. Though they don't have any revenues, they do have a coffer filled with assets and money. So why they don't have an attorney letter, I don't know. Then they've also recognized that it had a super duper ridiculously low float. He says it's 242K, I say 260, either way, a quarter million, split it down the middle. And he puts all the information up there, pictures of what we just looked at, and that's really all it took. Now, if we go take a look, see what they were actually saying, WSFL. Just jumping into Twitter, I have no idea. I'm just gonna scroll part way down in here, see what we get. All right, this was 34 minutes ago, so they're still talking about it. The aftermath, there's one five hours ago, 47 minutes ago, uh, two hours. WSFL, if this gets volume, it's a $10 stock instantly. Massive DD here, wow. What DD they got? Woodstock Wealth Management Inc. is an advisory company located in Woodstock, Georgia and controls $468 million in assets under management across 1,981 customer accounts, placing it among the bigger firms in the United States by assets. Okay, well, where's the revenues? I mean, something should be going on here. This is from an older filing. Uh, no idea if they're still working on it, but the CEO and Gene Langmesser were working on EV bikes. So you've got some information there. But a lot of this information was the same thing. As I said, everybody just kept repeating the low float and the assets. And when you get enough people on Twitter to move this thing, it moves fast. I'll show you. Let's go take a look at that chart. As you've probably already guessed, if you've been with me before, we are over here at Think or Swim doing all of our charting on these stocks. This is my free trading platform. I got it from TD Ameritrade. You sign up for a free trading account, they give it to you. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like, free. So we are looking at ticker WSFL, Woodstock Holdings. And would you believe that is a four hour, six month chart? Not a lot of trading days, and there's not a lot of trading per day either. This started back here in December. The next actual day it traded was February. Then we have to go all the way here to April for our next trading day. And, oh, we got two days in April. Woo-woo! Then it jumps to May. Then it goes to July. And here we finally hit August. And we've had two days in a row of trading now. And these last two days, it has been growing. Technicals are very strong. Volume has increased. 
all because of Twitter, as far as I can tell. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. Well, there you go. Flat as a pancake, really not doing anything until yesterday. It started to move, started down here at 14 cents, hit a high of 24 cents, not bad for just a little jump and bump, and she ended the day around 21 cents. So really at about a 33% gain yesterday. She opened up about the same, and today she ended up at 68, almost 69 cents. And what did she come in at? 21. So yeah, we are just under 300%, 261%. Technicals are repping right now. The uh, volume is real strong. At the very end of the day, the last 60 minutes, it did taper off to the lowest point of the day. Five day, five minute. All right, we pretty much just got the last two days. And she has climbed steady all day long. She did have a few dips, broke the 10 a couple times, never got near the 20. Now, as I have always said, as soon as a new SMA comes onto the board, I see in most cases the price gravitates to it, drops to it or rises to it, wherever it is. This hasn't happened yet. It's a bit curious. It looks like it is pushing down right now, but nothing more serious than anything it's done through the day. We hit a high bubble here and she's had a pullback. Normal, you hit a high, you have a pullback. Uh, technicals at this very point do not look strong. That pullback right there is what everything is showing right now. Everything is starting to peter out. However, it only took Twitter to get this going. As far as I can tell, I may be wrong, but I didn't find anything in the news or the filings or any articles, anything like that. It was only people talking on Twitter about assets and low float, and that seemed to get people interested. So maybe tomorrow there could be a continuation. I wouldn't expect it. But if you see something going on, well, with the float of 260,000 shares, you may want to consider it because if it gets any kind of run, today it had a run. It only sold 250,000 shares and it got up 260%. If it does this again tomorrow, I don't know, folks. Obviously, at 67 cents, it would have to really jump. It'd have to get up to 2 and $3 to get that sort of gains again. And you've got to keep that in mind. So I honestly would expect this to dip and probably not even bounce, but I found it interesting that a stock that has really nothing to offer except low float and assets ran like this. Gonna do something a wee bit different now. We're gonna look at three different stocks that are all in the same business, all running on the same news. The FDA came out with an announcement on Tuesday. I've jumped on over here to the Washington Post. They're gonna sum it up for us real quick and easy. The FDA moves to make over-the-counter hearing aids available to millions. The Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday moved to make hearing aids cheaper and easier to buy over-the-counter without a prescription or a medical exam. That right there saves you money. Medical exams aren't free. Prescriptions are not free. President Biden says that this action makes good on my commitment to lower the cost for American families, delivering nearly $3,000 in savings to American families for a pair of hearing aids. Wow, if you're saving $3,000, how much are hearing aids? I mean, I wear glasses, but I still don't need a hearing aid. Wow, they've got to be really expensive. So I've got three companies that are running on this news, all working with hearing aids one way or another, and they're all different. And I'll point out the differences to you. The first one we got, this is a very appropriate ticker, E-A-R, EAR. This is Eargo Inc. She is on the NASDAQ. She finished today at $3.13 with almost 55% gains. She was one of the lucky ones. She had bigger gains earlier. All three of these stocks were running strong early in the day. Matter of fact, they've been running for the last few days, picking up momentum. And today was one of their strongest. But most of them did have big drops at the back half of the day. I was looking at the market today. It looked like a lot of the market had that same drop. Some of the key facts about this company, she does about $30 million a year right now in revenues. Her share structure, all right, they don't list the float or the unrestricted shares, but we know it's under $40 million. 
Uh, the next stock I want to show you, you're probably familiar with it too, is INND, Interscope Hearing Technologies. This is a company that got a hold of two hearing aid companies in the last year, and one of those companies came with a huge contract with Walmart. And here, very recently, Walmart just upped the ante on that contract. They doubled the amount of stores from about 7,000 to 15,000 and kicked the order up to $10 million. And they're putting these kiosks in their vision centers to sell their products. Uh, looks like this one dropped even further than her gain. She was up earlier, as you'll see on the chart. She finished today at 0 0.02195. She's on the pink tier on the OTC. She's got those precious green ticks, so everything looks good here. She's doing about a half a million dollars of revenue in a year. So her revenues are down, but we're expecting those to come up. Her share structure, ridiculously high. Too high. We have $6.3 billion in the float. And the last stock that was running today, HRAL, here at last holdings. She finished a day at 0 .00265 with 15% gains. She's on the pink limited tier, which means she's late on some of her filings. She has a verified profile and a transfer agent, so that looks good. But she is a shell risk. She is in business, and she's supposed to be making money. Now, the weird thing is, as I looked around at the news, I jumped into the financials, this company doesn't work with hearing aids. They work with hearing devices, not that you put in your ears, we're talking devices, you know, like speakers, something like that. And they work with hearing tests. So they do work with hearing tests. But this company was running as well. You know, I guess with the name like Here At Last Holdings, people didn't have to do a whole lot of DD. They just kind of figured it was in there. What is the share structure on this company? Ah, average, I mean a high average, 257 million. Financials for this company? Uh, nil. We got nil. So your NASDAQ company is doing 30 million. Your pink limited or your pink company, INND, is doing a half a million. And HRAL is doing absolutely nothing really. And disclosures, how late are they? Oh, well, we got one here. The attorney letter date came out in July. Um, do we have a quarterly report here? Quarterly, no, we're missing a couple quarterly reports here. So they got an annual here that's being put in a couple times. Looks like they're trying to get that right. So they've got a few that are late. So we've got three, EAR, I-N-N-D, and H-R-A-L. Looks like EAR is the better of the three stocks. I-N-N-D is coming up with those big contracts with Walmart. And H-R-A-L, I don't really know. She just kind of got tossed into the same bucket. Let's go take a look at all three of these charts. Jumping on back to TOS, we have all three stocks teed up and ready to go. E-A-R, I-N-N-D, and H-R-A-L. First one we're gonna take a look at here is our NASDAQ stock, E-A-R. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $8.84 and a low bubble of 67 cents just before these jumps. She's been fighting to get through the 200 without a whole lot of luck. And here recently, she's had a couple good strong pokes through it. Not quite sure what this one is. This was anticipation of earnings, which failed and <laughs> dropped right back down to the 200, even lower than the 200. Scooped across the 200, and these last few days, it has been surging hard and fast. Came up from $1.10 up to $3.40. Volume has kicked in in these last few days, and the technicals are screaming. Let's just come on down to that five-day, five-minute. So we have today, which is Wednesday, Tuesday. So it started to move yesterday pretty strong, especially at the end of the day. We had a nice jump there from $1.48 to $2.18. Yeah, 50 cents, boom. Lots of pre-market, aftermarket activity, and she just continued it through today. And if we look at today, she started off the day at $2.39, and she got up here to $3.44. She's kept more than 50% of her gains. She did drop a little. Uh, we got to keep 54%. And she's still going sideways right now. Uh, doesn't look like she's going to bounce or tear anything up. I see our SMAs are starting to curve down now. Our PPO is 
crossed down and pointing down just like the MACD. Everything looks like it has actually calmed down right now, which is not a big surprise. After two days of running on the news, you can only expect it to go so high. Now let's take a look at INND. Let's jump back to that four hour view. All right, so this chart looks a little bit better actually. We were above the 200 back here, fell under it, was under it for quite a while, hit a low bubble here, and really from that low bubble, it has been working its way back up. And that low was at 002, and right now we are at almost three cents. So you're looking at 1,500% uh, gains right there from this low to that high. We looked at it way back here on uh, the first week of June. And she did a good jump then. She went from 004 up to 008 almost. Almost 100% jump. But as you can see, she has been catching a lot of momentum ever since she made her deals with Walmart. That's what this was. That was the Walmart deal. And here recently, now the last couple of days have been about the news with the FDA. But what's all that? What is all that? That is just people believing in this company. That is what it's all about. And remember, she's been doing about a half a million dollars a year. Her revenues are just now starting to increase. Our technicals, they were very strong, but we can see a pullback and a crash on the RSI here at the end of the day today. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. So the last two days, she has been pushing hard. She has been stair stepping up, had a bad drop here came right back up, right? She dropped, went across, and came back up. We look for these. These unexpected vertical drops, you normally end up getting that gap filled. So she went across doing nothing the next day. The third day, just a little bit of rise on that 50-day SMA, and then the news came out from the FDA, and she took off from, uh, call it a penny and a half, up to... Uh, just under two and a half cents. So about 60, 70% gain yesterday. And then there was pre-market aftermarket activity and she opened up at about two and a half cents and got almost to three cents. So, you know, you had about 20, 25% gains here. And she fell hard. Look at that. That is unbelievable. She gave away more than she took today. She even fell lower than, yeah, look, she's way down here. So she had a very hard fall. She's back to her 200, which these last few days have lifted. They've got it up. And look at that. That's kind of interesting. The very last poke of the day really jumped, really jumped. And now that would be encouraging to me, actually. It doesn't show a lot of potential anywhere else. Technicals are weak. The volume has been getting weaker. Everything has been falling very hard. But she's been bouncing repeatedly across the 200 and not breaking through. She isn't making a hole. She's just getting her feet wet. And then you have this big torpedo. Now, it did fall back down here, but it did reach all the way up here, breaking the 20 and the 50 and hitting the 200-day hole. The 200-day hole is a lot like the 200-day SMA. They both take 200 days. Average them all together, and you come up with an average. But the hole puts more credence on current prices. So the line is normally in a whole different place than the 200-day SMA. So I keep my eye on this just because of that bump right there. And let's take a look at that last one, H-R-A-L. Is that right? That's right. And let's go back to that four-hour view. All right. She has been under the 200 all this time this month. Just this month, she has cracked it for the first time. And today, she actually got through it. She has been under the 50 most of this time. Hit a low bubble here of double zero one. Had a high here of double zero four and a half. And the volume is kicking in today, as is the price. Obviously, the technicals are strong. Looking at that five day, five minute, there was nothing going on for the days before. That was uh, Tuesday. That was when the FDA came out with the information. We did have a nice jump from uh, double zero two, let's just call it two, up to uh, two and a half. So you had about 20, 25% gains, but then it dropped, fell right down here. So you only ended up with about 15% gains yesterday. Looks like she opened right where she closed. I call that 23, she went to 33. So you roughly had about 33% gains at her high. She held it for most of the day until the back half of the day when she lost over 50% of her gains. 
This really shouldn't have been running. They don't sell hearing aids. I didn't see hearing aids anywhere. They have hearing tests and they sell listening devices, not hearing devices, little devices that you hear sound through. So I'm not quite sure how they got in there. But those were the three companies that were running today. Now there are other hearing aid companies on the NASDAQ, on the OTC. They weren't actually moving today. No. So I don't know how some get picked and some don't, but they do move in clusters. So when you see big news come out that is affecting the entire nation, find companies that are in those niches. Chances are you're going to find quite a few of them that are moving. So I got another big runner for you today. This is ticker PDPG, Performance Drink Group. Now she did not have any filing, she did not have any news, but boy, she did have a catalyst that got the investors excited. She finished the day with over 190% gains and just a wee bit over one cent. Now folks, that's a beautiful buy-in price. One penny, you get it at one cent. As soon as it goes to the very next digit, two cents, you've made 100% gains. When it hits three cents, you have tripled your money. Now, would you rather wait to buy it at three cents and go all the way to nine cents to triple your money or buy at one and just go to three? Right, simple question gets a simple answer. This company is on the pink tier. It's current. It's got those coveted green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Problem here is she's a shell risk. Now, we know what that means. She's in business and she's supposed to be making money, but she's not. And I know she's not. I looked at her financials. There's nothing there. She has got about a half a million in assets, but no revenues. So what does Performance Drink Group do? Well, as you would guess, they make performance drinks. <laughs> they tell us here that they are the manufacturer and retailer of performance sports beverages. But when you jump into that filing I was just talking about, they tell us that they are also involved with alcoholic beverages. Now, I haven't seen anything about that, but that's what they say, and that's a legal document, so I'm going to take them at their word. They also give us a little more information here about some dealings that they've had just in the last couple of months. On May 5th of this year, the company launched its Pro Boost Energy Shot per their website over at ProBoostEnergy.com. And then we got some bad news. On May 17th of this year, the company received a notice from the OTC markets that they have been given the status of caveat emptor, CE, skull and crossbones, buyer beware. It's the worst you can get on the OTC market. Absolutely the worst. Nobody will even consider the stock, but you can't buy it. You can't sell a stock when it's caveat emptor. They even remove all the information off of OTC markets while it's caveat emptor. So you have no clue what is going on with the stock until it's removed. But as you can see, it is pink now. So what do you think that catalyst was? That's right, the CE got removed and that is all it took because nobody could buy it until it was removed. So what was the relative volume around that today? Not gigantic, but she normally does about a half a million shares a day. Today she did seven million, so she is kicked up. Share structure, well that's good news. We got a low float. Now don't go getting spoiled because I showed you one that had a quarter million. No, this has only got 34 million. I'm gonna say only. That is a low float. I like that and I'm sure that had a lot to do why this thing almost hit 200% gains today. Financials, we're not gonna see anything. Well, they don't even list anything, but I actually looked at them. There is nothing there. Disclosures, well, their financials are all caught up. We expected that. And filings, they've got nothing since January of this year. So how did I know it was running? Well, I saw the scanner. I saw it running on the chart, but how did I know why it was running? That's right, Joe, it was Twitter. I go over to Twitter. When you can't find a catalyst, go over to Twitter. They've got 1,000, 10,000, maybe 100,000 eyeballs doing research for us, and they like to share the tidbits they find. Now, it's not like I take it all for gospel, but they're great leads. It gives me a hint of what to look at. So this is what was being repeated on uh, Twitter today for PDPG. The CE is removed. Pink current, yes. Super low float, only 34 million. They were sure it was going to break two cents. It started off at 0009 today. So let's go take a look at that chart because it was a while. Remember, since May, the caveat emptor has been there. 
That is a six month, four hour chart for PDPG. As you can see, we had a really high bubble back here of $2.10 back in February. Haven't got a clue why it was running. I did check the OTC markets. They don't take the news back that far. This is February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And she jumped from 20 cents to $2. You're talking about a thousand percent jump right there. And then she fell all the way back down, even below the 20 cents, and has come all the way down here to a low bubble of triple zero six from $2.10. I can't even calculate that, folks. That is a huge drop. Now I'm going to zoom in down here. This is that big spike right there. That is when she went caveat emptor. Why there was so much volume on that day, I don't know. But this is when she basically got off the market. Any activity you see is by brokers and marketers behind the scenes. It has nothing to do with us. And then right here is the 12th when she came back on the market. And our volume has been picking up for the last few days. No great increases, but we've had some good bounces here. Technicals have been strong off and on. Let's come down to that 20-day, one-hour. So this is the day she came back on the market. There she is, CE, can't buy it, can't sell it. Comes back on the market at uh, double zero one and went up to, let's just call it two cents. That is 2,000% gains right there in the first hour of the day. And then it fell back. Boy, the second hour, it was down to just 1,000% gains. So it lost 50% in one hour. And she started tapering away here. And for the last couple of days, she's actually fallen. And now she's hit the 50. You can see that's a solid smack there. And she's bouncing off of that. And it looks like she's setting up right on top of that 200 for a breakout. She's already punched a hole here. Maybe she can climb through that hole here and then start to fly. Technicals look good for it. She looks like she's on the launch pad and ready to go. And the volume is increasing. Let's look at that five day, five minute. I'm kind of excited to see what this looks like. <laughs> All right, there's our humongous jump. And would you believe it? That big jump happened in five minutes. Now I'm, in, I'm gonna come down to one minute. I wanna see how long it was. Oh, we can't even go back that far, can we? Nope, it's back there and it won't let me get there. Sorry, I could tweak it to go get it, but we're just gonna stick with this. So it was five minutes that she came down here from uh, double zero one up to two cents and then fell back 50%, fell for three days and today she's been climbing again. We ended the day at 191% gains, which is just a little off of her ceiling. I mean, she finished the day at uh, just over a penny, 0 0.0102. And she was up here at uh, 0 0.012. So she was just a little bit higher all the SMAs look righteous. Volume is there. I'm not saying it's overwhelming. Uh, PPO is on the top of the pink. We do have a negative MACD, which doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fall. I see divergences all the time, but our RSI is pulling away. You got another low float stock here that just got back on the market. I, I would think maybe they'd come out with some news, but I wouldn't count on that. I think she's had a big jump here. I think people have got their eyes on her still. I think the setup that she has on the one hour right now, let's go back to that one hour, that right there. If she actually gets that bar completely on top of the 200 on the one hour, I would feel confident that she might get another burst. You may want to follow this on Twitter. Put PDPG in on Twitter with the dollar sign in front of it and see what anyone's saying in the morning. Watch the volume in the morning. She does get a little bit of activity pre-market, uh, pre-market, after-market, but I would watch it right at the bell. All righty then, got some leftovers for you. I'm going to give you the tickers and the catalyst for stocks that were catching attention today, jumping and bumping on the charts. Only got two, but you should be aware of them. This one, ticker BBIG, Vinco Ventures, was the buzz today. Everybody was talking about it. There was a lot of people playing it, a lot of people watching it. Reason? It was pulled off of the NASDAQ on the 4th 
of this month and it just got back on the market yesterday. And from what I have gathered, this is a company that is putting together a social media that is going to compete against TikTok. They think they're going to put TikTok on their beep. <laughs> That's what they think. That's the word out there. So you may want to keep an eye on this one. Finished today with a 23% gain at $1.39. Another ticker I want to share with you again. I share this one with you very often, not because I even own it. I don't. <laughs> I do like to play it though. This is CMGR, Clubhouse Media. Finished today at 0013 even. They did have gains earlier, but they broke even by the end of the day. They had news come out today, but that's really not why I'm sharing this with you. They had their second quarter financial come out. They doubled what they did the first quarter. They went over 100% gains, which is great news. But what I'm pointing out is what happened yesterday. Clubhouse Media Group closes promo deal with Josh Altman. Million dollar listing reality TV star. Now, I personally have no clue who that is. So why am I showing it to you? Because the company is in business of hiring celebrities. They're in the influencing business and their celebrities work for other companies doing influencing for products and services. So every time they go out and get a new person and add it to the team, there is a jump or bump on the chart. And depending how popular that person is, that determines how big the jump is. I have seen some very popular people put hundreds of percent gains on the board. Others, only 20 or 30 percent. But it's regular. You can virtually count on it. So this ticker, CMGR, Clubhouse Media Group, belongs on your news watch list not on your watch list on your platform that's great too but you need to put this somewhere else and look at this every day on the news see if there's any news have they hired anybody new today do you know who it is do you think everybody else knows who it is chances are then that stock is gonna rip so watch CMGR for news they get somebody you know this will be a stock you'll want to play that day so even in a slow market, you still got stocks that are taking big gains. But you notice the catalyst like isn't in your face. It isn't headline news. It's buzz. It's people recognizing, putting pieces together, saying this looks like an opportunity, even though there's no highlights or limelights on it right now. And those are the kind of stocks we were looking at today. There was definitely reason for them to be running, and they may run some more. And these sort of stocks pop up all the time. And I find a lot of them just by going through Twitter, folks, just looking at stocks on the OTC market on Twitter and see what people are talking about. They're great leads. DD, it really is a lot of fun. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.